Hi everybody. One of the cool things the Web Audio API gives us is programmatic access through JavaScript, the ability to manipulate and work with sounds. Now the sounds we work with do not have to be from an external file, do not have to be something we pre-recorded or predefined. It can be something we generate on the fly by letting our browser and our computer do its thing. And so in this video, what I'm gonna show you is not just how to generate a sound, I'll cover that separately, but how to generate a sound that is more random sounding. So each time you hit play, something different comes out of our speakers, which is a kind of a cool effect to kind of tie in with a general theme of adding some liveliness and coolness to our websites and web apps by throwing a bit of randomness at various things. So let's get started. The way we're gonna do this is by kind of doing the typical web audio approach of building up an audio graph and connecting it to the output, which is our speakers. So we're gonna start at the very left, which is our source. Our source is gonna be not an external file, not gonna be something we have as an HTML audio element on the page. It's gonna be something we generate. And that is typically done through what is known as an oscillator node. And I don't wanna to get too far into the weeds on this, but the two things that play a big role in making the oscillator node sound the way it does is a waveform, which is the, the type of harmonics and type of wave that you'll typically see, whether it's gonna be a, a sine wave, a square wave, a, a triangle wave, or a sawtooth wave. This kind of has a big role in how our sound ultimately you know, gets heard. And the other big detail is the frequency. You know, A low frequency sound is gonna be much deeper, kind of like a subwoofer might play. And a high frequency sound is gonna be something that is more tinny, more something that is going to be a little bit more on the kind of, I guess, like the, the breaking the glass kind of a, a sound. We're gonna be somewhere in the happy middle, so it sounds a little bit pleasant. We're gonna pass that into a gain node, which is gonna be used for adjusting the volume and being able to kind of have our sound fade out very nicely as part of us playing it. And lastly, we're gonna connect all of that to the output, which is really going to be the speakers that will make the sound ultimately work. This chart is really a high level visual visualization of the code that we're going to be writing. So, you know, in a few moments, you're gonna see us taking all these, you know, cool illustrations and colors and turn them into lines of JavaScript. Now to follow along, I've created a small code pen. You can access it here. So that way you're not spending time recreating the example, but instead you're gonna be spending time actually writing some JavaScript, working on the cool things that are relevant to generating a random sound. So speaking of which, let's take a look at an example of what we're gonna create. So what we have here is a, a very simple, just a div with like an element and I put like an icon of a, of a magic ball here. And then when you click it, notice what happens. You're gonna hear a sound. Each time I click, a slightly different sound gets played because at each play, we're slightly altering the waveform and the frequency to create a different kind of sound at the end. See, nothing too complicated, just a, you know, simple beeps and boops that are going to be random or as random as we can make it within the, the options we have for waveforms and frequency. And so if you go to the code pen, you'll go ahead and see the example from a starting point. I have that exact same environment recreated inside VS Code, where you can see I have the exact same example up and running. And the thing that's missing, of course, is a JavaScript, because that's something that we're gonna be adding ourselves using some of the things we're gonna be seeing here. And if you look at the example we have right now, the, just to walk you very quickly through it, we have a div with a class value of container, has an image with ID value sound item, and then we have uh, a bunch of things in terms of like an SVG file that is going to be the visual you see here and just some CSS that makes it look the way it does, gives it a hover color and the additional hover when we select it and click on it and a little bounce effect that plays when we actually interact with it. So nothing too you know, stunning or crazy there, just some basic CSS and HTML to get up and running. Now, what isn't going to be the, the basic HTML and CSS will be our JavaScript. So let's go ahead and go there. So in my HTML, I'm going to go ahead and add a script element. And I'm, what we're really gonna do is translate the visual we saw earlier of the audio graph into JavaScript form. And so to do this, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually, we have a button here that we wanna listen to and click, and then actually have it listen to changes that are made, like the clicks essentially. So I'm gonna do let sound element equals document that query selector, and it's going to be hashtag sound item. Okay, so now we have our sound element object, which is now going to listen for, you know, at least have an attachment to an element, the DOM, which is the image that we have here. 
And then let's go ahead and add the event listener. Add event listener, click, and we're gonna have it play random sound. Now, this is an important detail to call out because without you having interacted with the application or website, a sound cannot play. There are various settings to kind of make it so that a sound isn't playing involuntarily on our behalf, because you can imagine that might be a little irritating. And so one of the things all the browsers require is for you to interact with it. And in our case, the way we're gonna be interacting with it is by actually clicking on this image as part of playing our sound. And so that kind of is a little bit of a backstory on why the sound isn't just something we're having play at the very beginning, because we, we, why not? We're learning something, right? So we don't have to be too strict in terms of like final user experience. All right, so I'm just gonna create my empty event handler function event sound and pass an event argument if needed. And let's go ahead and create a few variables while we're at it. So the first thing we do is let context equals null. And this is an important detail as part of initializing our audio context, which is the outer container, if you wanna say it that way, of how our sounds will be played and how they're all gonna be connected. And then I'm gonna create an array called waveforms. And this is where we're gonna have the different types of waveforms that play a key role in how our sounds actually get played. And so it's gonna have a value of sine, square, sawtooth, and triangle. Okay, so that's a you know, detail we're gonna see in a few moments. But now let's go ahead and just start wiring up our audio and all the nodes to start generating the sound. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have if context equals null, which by the first time we launch it, it will be. I'm gonna say context equals new audio context. I'm gonna use the constructor form of creating a new audio context. And then from here, let's go ahead and create the oscillator node and the gain node as well. That oscillator node equals context.create oscillator. And then let gain node equals context.create gain. So these two nodes have been created. And right now, just like creating elements in the DOM, they aren't really doing anything. They've been created, they're you know, inside the context of our audio context object, but they aren't associated with anything. And we'll do some of that wiring up really in code in a few moments. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is as part of our sound being played, we wanna give it a random waveform. You know, each of these values for the waveform will alter how our sound is working. And that is specified in the type property on oscillator node. So oscillator node equals, and I'm just gonna pick a, a random value from our array in the waveforms array. And that code is something that looks a little bit like this. math.floor, math.random times, it's gonna be waveforms dot length. And if you look at it that way, you can see that what we're doing is, the interesting thing is we want to make sure the index position passed in is a value in our array that it just happens to be random. And the way we can do that is by using this format. I cover this in another video, which I'll link to in the description below on how to pick a random item from an array. Okay, so we have our oscillator node type selected, and let's go into the frequency as well. And the frequency can be uh, can be a pretty wide range, but I wanna keep it localized to a range that we can reasonably listen to and have it not be too irritating. And so I'm gonna do frequencies 100 plus math.random times 10,000. So we're gonna be between 100 and 10,000 plus 100, which is 10,100. And I'm putting this all in parentheses because I'm gonna go ahead and round it to two decimal positions. And so by using the to fix property on a number and passing in the number of position you want, you can get that going pretty nicely. And so now let's go ahead and set that to oscillator node that frequency that value equals our frequency. All right, so what we've done now is we've defined our oscillator node, think of it as a sound machine in some ways, and we set two properties on it, which is the type property, which specifies the waveform, and the frequency property, which specifies the, the frequency itself. And these are both tied to a random value, which is basically gonna tell a random sound generator to our sound generator to be more random in how it works. And so all we need to do next is define our gain node. And the gain node is really uh, plays a big role in being able to adjust the volume and also clip the sound once it goes after a certain duration. We don't want the sound to play forever. So gain node.gain, and there are multiple methods and properties we can use here, but I'm gonna use an exponential ramp to value at time. This is a pretty long fun property name or function name in this case, but it is pretty descriptive though. 
it is really going to be if you imagine uh, the sound being a curve what we're going to have is that curve slowly decay into silence and this is one of the easiest way to do it it's a gain node dot gain dot exponential ramp to value at time you know it's probably a very good chance i made a mistake somewhere but we'll deal with that in a little bit so i'm going to put a very small number here so four you know, zero zero one and then the second argument is going to be at how much what the duration is going to be before it gets to completely zero so i'm going to do context dot current time plus one so the context object our audio context gets a current time as part of how our of how our sound is currently going and what I'm saying is that whatever time is right now, add one second to it, which is basically a duration of one second, and then clamp it down at that point. And then so what we've done is we've defined our gain node, and um, let's go ahead and now connect it to our oscillator. If you remember the chart we had earlier, we had the oscillator node on one side, the gain in the middle, then the output at the end. And so now we need to just wire up these nodes to make sure that we get that you know, code version of the visual connection we saw earlier so oscillator node dot connect gain node so this is this makes our oscillator node be aware of the gain node itself and then we're going to take the gain node and connect it to the output which is specified by context dot destination which is our speaker and then the last thing we do is tell our sound machine to actually start you know think of it as a, a virtual on off switch and so i'm going to say oscillator node dot start and specify a value of zero which means start now okay so I wrote a lot of code. There's probably some mistakes there, but let's see what's going on if I hit play. Okay, we're having an error here, which is fine. You know, we, this is part of us learning. Let's go see what the error is that I that I made here. Let's go to the console and an audio parameter binary double value is not finite at line 78, 21. Yep, so it's something, something right here where I made a, a pretty big you know mistake here. Gain node dot gain is not working as expected and if i click here you can see that yep it is at this particular value and so what is error saying again the provided double value is non-finite okay so let's see why it is currently not working we can see the provided double value is not finite let's see what's going on here and yep i can see that i have my current time variable misspelled so now let's go ahead and try this again and you can hear the sound plays exactly like the way we wanted it to, which is which is great. That's what else could we really ask for in an example, right? You can keep clicking it, and you can see the sound just happens to have a nice series of chimes that sound very, very different. And so now that's really the, the bulk of what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how easy it was to connect uh, an oscillator node, which is a sound generator, to the gain, to the output, and have a sound play, and not just have any sound play, but have the sound that gets played to be a little bit random. So, hope you found it to be pretty valuable, and I totally want to check out some cool things you may have created in this space as well. So, if you created some cool sounds that are randomly generated, comment below or post in the forums. Love to see and check it out. And so, of course, speaking of which, if you have any questions or comments or just want to talk about web development with a, a bunch of really friendly web developers. We'll post in the forums at forum.group.com. There are a few hundred thousand members just like yourself there who are active. And so it'd be pretty cool to see all the things that you create. Lastly, tell your friends and enemies all about it. If you found this video to be good or bad, it's all good. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos I'll be creating. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter, on Facebook, and other places where I tend to post you know, web development related topics. And lastly, buy my book. You know, if you find the way I explain things to be interesting and exciting, that I wrote a lot of this in book form across a variety of a lot of front end topics. So link below, check it out, and you know, make they make good gifts as well. So hint hint. And with that, I will see you all next time.